Hey guys, uh, you're watching Soul State. I'm Jorn, head of A&R at Spinin, and today I'm going to tell you how to get heard and signed. A&R for me is, is stomach feeling, but what I do a lot when I really like a record, I'm playing it loud in the office, uh, not, not this time because we're still closed. If people were reacting on the record, I knew, hey, they like it, and uh, uh, I'm attracting their, their attention. Okay, okay, what does an A&R actually do? Um, listening to a lot of music, first of all, that, that's the most important, uh, but but it's not only listening to music, it's coaching the artist. What's good in the demo? What can we do better? Success is, uh, of course, having chart hits. The fun part or the challenge is always, oh, we're having a hit in a certain country. Uh, let's see if we can yeah, make that uh, a multiple territory hit. And after after that, try to make it a global hit. What do you think is the difference between a good A&R and a bad A&R? I think a good A&R can, can judge a record based on uh, what the audience is, is wanting, knowing what trends uh, there are in the market and servicing a, a, an audience and not your personal uh, taste. You're trusting your gut, but at the same time, you're trying to be very in sync with what the world actually wants. Absolutely. That's so, so important because you're not signing your record to play them at home for your own taste. No, it's all about what the audience is wanting, the, the current market. That's so super important. What's most difficult for you as an A&R? I think entering complete new genres because uh, you are known for a certain brand and a certain sound. Sometimes, yeah, you simply want to enter a new genre as well. And that can be difficult. That's interesting because one of the main questions from the outsider's perspective is where's the line between sort of fitting the label and being unique? And it seems like you're sort of struggling that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You talked about like, you know, going into the office and blasting a record. I think this is a nice segue into how you guys are sort of making decisions behind the scenes. If you were to wave like a magic wand, what does the perfect artist or what does the perfect track to sign look like? Nobody's perfect, uh, but uh, there are some things, some elements which make, can, can make an artist complete. First of all, that's the music and needs to be a good musician uh, or ha needs to have really good ears. I think an artist needs to be very good and uh, social, doing interviews, uh, uh, networking, and he needs to be a great entertainer, of course. You can't be good in everything, if you know what, I'm, uh, what I mean. And for mm -hmm. the perfect record, it's so hard to say. I think one of the biggest disconnects I've seen is people on the outside as producers, like wondering what's, what's happening behind closed doors. How do you actually make decisions about whether to sign an artist or, or release a track? Most important is always, of course, uh, your stomach feeling like, like, hey, wow, this record is coming in and you get a big smile on your face. Wow, this is something fresh. and. Yeah, that, that's the most important. If I like it and I really trust in it, uh, I'm the decision maker in the end. And I've got uh, a couple of other uh, younger A&Rs in the team as well. So I always uh, want to hear their uh, opinions about the record as well. Thanks for sharing that. I think it's just very mysterious for people on the outside of like, yeah, what, the, what the hell goes on, you know? <laughs> yeah, and I think people think like, oh, it's 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 big science, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, no, it isn't. It's, it's all about passion and excitement. That, that's super important. But there's one tip, uh, don't spam record companies and only send records if you're completely sure. Like, hey, this is the best production I ever made and th this really fits what the label is looking. It needs to be a good fit and you need to understand where you are sending the record. So if you ever want to get a spin and release, make sure to submit your song uh, to the demo drop. Uh, uh, details are linked below and it would be amazing to hear your, your, your fresh and new stuff. Uh, that's the, the, the big opportunity to get noticed and to get signed. Check some of the tips in this video because that will help uh, you to, to make that right demo and to get signed. What percentage of music gets signed via connections or maybe artists that you've worked with historically versus sort of cold demo submissions? Demo su submissions, we're still checking them a lot. It's super important. So I think it's a little bit 50-50. Sometimes there are still super, super good demos coming into your inbox, uh, but also via our talent pool. That's checked on, on, on daily basis as well. And we get in a lot of uh, due to connections. So I still uh, can remember that there was a bookings agent who was sending me uh, a tip that was Mike Williams. Hey, Jorn, go check that, that guy out. He's a super talented. Basically, music producers want to work with you. For them, what's the best way to get heard? Would you recommend talent pool first? Would you recommend collaborating? No. Like, yeah. how? No. how? 
what, what's super important, if you make a new record, don't copy what, what, what's already there. What I'm always advising uh, new artists, but also our own uh, already signed artists, always think two to three months ahead. Don't try to innovate too much because then simply the audience the audience doesn't understand it anymore because it's too complex and it's too too fresh it was basically the top question for my community so i wanted to make sure and ask it it's about playing it safe versus taking risks and i get the sense that producers aren't really sure how much risk they can take before the demo doesn't fit the label so how would you suggest producers navigate that whole playing it safe versus taking risks if they're trying yeah. to work with you. That, that's a very good one. And that, that's the whole philosophy of our A&R process. Uh, take a little bit of risk, but don't take too much risk, because if you take too much risk, your music will be too fresh and the audience will not understand it. In 2020, we had a, a big uh, hype around uh, Slap House. The business uh, uh, last year by Chesto uh, was bringing that genre to the next phase because it was a little bit fresher it was a little bit darker still super melodic so that extended the current trend so that's what i always advise try to extend uh and renew the the, the current trend another big tip what we always give for young artists don't start with complete new vocals. What I learned when I started at Spinin, I was a DJ promoter. And all the time when I sent out a complete new vocal record, DJs were always asking, uh, Jorn, can you please send me the dub version? Because new vocals, if you play, the, uh, play, play a new vocal for the audience, they, yeah, your audience will stand completely still because they don't know it. They go jumping as soon as uh, they heard it on the radio a couple of times. So do something creative with uh, an old hit or forgotten hit, uh, a record from the past. So people hear something familiar uh, that will speed up the whole acceptation process of a &Rs, but also from DJs, uh, from portals, and, and of course the audience. And that way a record can lift up uh, so much quicker. For a record company, it's always trying to, to build stories to promote a record to, to, to the next, uh, next level. That, that was a kind of a big statement. You said it's always about creating stories to build yeah. a record to the next level. Can you elaborate yeah. on what you mean? You, you can't go with a complete new record uh, uh, towards radio. Like, hey, I've got this, this great new record and uh, uh, can you please put it on the playlist? That doesn't work. There's so much competition of all the big names, of all the pop stars. So you all, you first need to create a hype, a buzz. And if you get a good story on level one, you can uh, go to, to the next level, for example, uh, specialist uh, uh, radio, because you have a story and you can tell them, hey, watch this new kid. Uh, he's make, he made a really good record and all the big DJs are playing it on the main stages. Uh, it's charting at uh, a thousand and one track list. And as soon as the, that level is starting to support it uh, and the record is becoming a big uh, uh, trend uh, in, in that level, you can uh, eventually maybe cross the record towards daytime radio and in the end make it a big crossover record. That's always the dream for a record company. At Spin In, we always look for new talents uh, at a very young stage uh, and try to develop them in, into to big superstars. I always compare it a little bit with, with a very famous Dutch football club called Ajax. Uh, they scout uh, talents at a very young age and they educate them and train them. Uh, and, and then, yeah, they become those, those super big superstars in the end. And, and I think uh, you can compare spinning a little bit uh, with, with that, yeah, that, that, that football club as well. We pick up artists at a very young stage and try to develop them uh, into yeah, global superstars. And one of the top questions from my community uh, was, do I need to have a strong social following to be signed as an artist? It's a nice plus to have it, but it's not essential. Spinin as a dan dance company, we inf invested a lot of in into our socials. I think we're having uh, for a dance company, maybe one of the biggest numbers of, of all the companies around the world. So no, it's not essential. It's nice because if you combine things, uh, your reach is starting to become even bigger, uh, but it, it's not essential. One of the things you just said that was interesting was contrary to what I believed, and I think a lot of music producers believed, which is like, I have to create this perfect piece of music because it's so competitive. You've actually said, you know, you're looking for young talent and trying to develop them. It sounds like you want to work with people long term. Do yeah. you sign most artists long or short term? And please define what short and long is. We sign most artists long term, but not super long. At the moment, uh, we sign artists for multiple singles. 
our aim is always to, to work on profiles. We don't really believe in just signing a record. Uh, if you just sign a record, uh, why invest in, 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 the, in the artist? Because the next one will end up at the competitors. Thank you. I think if you work long time, you can develop them much better. Sometimes if you're having a big hit and the other record is signed within another company, the other company can decide, oh, I'm going to put that record out quickly uh, because I can profit from the, the, the current success. And then you get cannibalization of your own music. And that, that can be super annoying because in the end, uh, you need to give a record as much a space as possible to, to, to make it as big as possible. When it comes to working with artists that you've found to be very successful in the past, are there any traits that you feel like successful artists have had in common? Yeah, absolutely. There, there, there's one thing, passion, passion, passion. Passion, passion, <laughs> passion for music. That that's really. I really don't believe in guys. Hey, I want to be a super uh, superstar DJ, and I want to play uh, on, on the main stages, and all the girls or all the boys uh, are liking me. No, it's about passion. So he or she needs to, to to be super motivated to make fantastic music. I think there's certain benefits that major labels can bring. For example, like radio and playlist yeah. promo. What would you say is the benefit of signing with a major label versus self-release? Uh, record companies are marketing machines and they understand that that's their, that, that, that's their business. They do it all the time. DJ promotions uh, to start with, with uh, that's so important to get a record uh, played by a lot of DJs. Uh, so a young bedroom producer doesn't have all the contacts around the world. We worked for years on a good database and connection. So our DJ promoter uh, knows everybody. Same with the radio promoter. Promoters. Uh, what we had, uh, have at Spinin is local uh, promotional teams in all the key territories. Spinin invested so much money uh, uh, since there, there is uh, social media in our uh, online community. An artist can profit big time about, uh, from that as well to give them a, a lot of, of reach in, in the early days. But I think the most important for a lot of artists is simply have a brand behind you. Because also with Spinin, we're a brand that gives gives you a big jump uh, in the acceptation process as well because, oh, it's signed by spinning. Okay, so it's a good record. It simply works that way. So let's talk about this whole demo drop thing that you have going on. What is the world's biggest demo drop? The world's biggest demo drop is a place where everybody in the world can send in their demos and they can get heard by all the spinning A&Rs and by uh, a superstar DJ. Do people have a better chance of getting your attention during this demo drop than normal? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm thinking what we did last year as well, there were more se several artists uh, involved as well. Uh, if you ever wanted to, to have a spin-in release, I think this is your chance to, to send a, a demo to spin-in and uh, to get, get signed. Really looking forward uh, to hear your, uh, your demos. I really hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I could help you with some tips. See you at the demo drop. Hit down.